Hey guys, welcome to another commentary. For those who've been dying and itching for commentary, sorry, it's been a little bit, hasn't it? Um, this one is Steve Cardinal, Cardinal as the Little Mermaid Ariel. He approached me about a month ago. He was like, hey man, can you, uh, can you do another YouTube channel thing? Uh, make a watch or draw of it, I'll promote it. And I'm like, yeah, let's do this. And, uh, so here we are. Uh, basically he made a video for Christmas and it was... Him dressed up as Ariel running around, I think, Disneyland? I don't know which one is what. I think Disneyland is California, while Disney World is Florida. I've never been, so I don't know. I really kind of want to go, but it sounds so expensive, and it all the lines. But yeah, so he asked me to draw him, and I was like, yeah, sure, let's do this. This is going to be fun. And uh, I wanted to make it look like it was a Disney movie cover. Uh, I wanted to make it look like it was drawn by Disney, and uh, did I get it? For the most part, I think. I think a lot of people really were like shocked to see it and really excited to see it, so that's cool. But uh, for the most part, uh, yeah, uh, I, I struggled with trying to get the face to look like him. Um, at certain points, I still don't think I got it all the way, but for the most part, I got it enough. I think, you know, enough to people will be like, oh, that's, you know, especially they go to his channel, that's Steve as Ariel. And uh, I did do some research on uh, facial hair with Disney movies. I, I, I double checked. I looked at the the Beast as well. I really just kind of Googled bearded Disney, and I got a lot. I actually saw a lot of really funny um, <laughs> Disney princesses with beards, and I may or may not have used that as reference as well. I can't remember at this point. I, I did look at different characters, and while his eyes do look very very feminine, mostly because I added the eyelashes because I thought it was funny. It was one of those things where Disney eyes, uh, while well, female and males do have different eyes, um, the shape and angle really didn't change depending on which character. Though uh, a Disney trick typically is um, female characters tend to have a little bit more of an arc on their eyes on the top half than uh, guys having more square eyes. But I did try to make them look a little bit more manly than Ariel's, but it did come out looking just like Ariel's. Coincidentally enough, if I did, if I took out the eyelashes, it is exactly like Prince Eric's, though. So that's kind of cool. Um, Steve uh, wanted a big nose. I kind of uh, I, I made it proportionate to him because uh, I wanted it to look like him and not to be like a Jewish stereotype or something. I don't know religion, what he is. But uh, the original drawing that he sent me that was like references, it was like, ah, it looks a little bit more caricature-y than Disney-y. Um, and so a lot of the stuff you see right now is just me mimicking the uh, movie poster uh, drawing of her. Obviously, um, he's got a little bit more of a, a stomach on this. That was something I thought would be really funny if he's just laying down. Uh, he did respond in the email. He's like, ah, oh, you made me a little fatter than I was expecting. But you know what? Keep it. Um, that, that makes it funnier. And I agree. Um, basically, I thought it would be great because, uh, cause, you know, I, I don't know. Um, as uh, as humor of man in a dress or man dressed as woman is... Uh, which is kind of a weird sense of humor thing. It it's funny and cute when Steve does it because there's just this innocence to it, this 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 like pure bliss that he has. And um, but like you know the general thing is I don't really get what's funny about a man in a dress. Like um, that you could see it being a little sexist a little bit, but you know like oh it's funny he's putting himself beneath himself because he's wearing a dress because men should wear dresses. <laughs> I don't know what that was. But, um, you know, it's funny when he does it because there's no malice behind it. It's just, it's, it's that. So, uh, a lot of time we have a certain view on what women should look like or, you know. So, usually stomachs aren't a thing that you see in, um, you know, magazines or just, you, when you think of the stereotypical woman, you tend to think of this hour-shaped person. And, uh, you know, so having him have a belly bulge, um, makes it a little bit more funny. And, you know, it, it's contrasting to that traditional idea that you have. And so, uh, you know, I agree with him. It is funnier. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so something I want to mention about Steve is that the coolest thing is I don't necessarily know how he makes money off YouTube. I mean, he's got 5 million subscribers and he's doing well enough. I don't know if he's just like was born rich or what, but you know, he lives in California. He, uh, he lives a nice lifestyle. Um, and, uh, like, I just don't think he's making money off YouTube because he uses so much copyrighted material. So, like, I assume most of it's flagged. 
Um, and even this video had a lot of like problems getting up. Like they put it up there and I think Disney or a weird third party rights owner to something really, really small in the, the song. But let me, let me, uh, explain. So the video, so this, this is a YouTube cover, right? And, um, so this is one of those banner images and he wanted it released the same time his video came out where he, um, has the audio is one of the Disney songs. And then it's just a montage of just clips of him running around dressed as princess Ariel wig, makeup, everything, but still having the beard and just kind of running through Disneyland. And there's some little skits here and there. Well, obviously he used the entire song from Disney, which you know, I could see where copyright claims would be thrown into it. Well, what that wound up happening is Disney um, has restricted rights with their music. So, like, um, if you put a song from Disney in your video, it might not be viewable in other countries. And so, a lot of his fans... I've actually... Surprisingly, there's a lot of fans on YouTube. Uh, you, you don't necessarily think about it. You just assume that everyone's in the same country as you. But, like, I would say um, a third, if not a little bit more, of my following is from the other side of the world, which is just insane to me. Um, and same thing with him. And the coolest thing is like, okay, so I don't think he's making much money off this. Uh, maybe he has like some kind of other deals or maybe it's just he does a lot of guest appearances because he has a huge following. But uh, something really cool about Steve is the fact that he, he does seem genuine about liking to entertain people. This isn't a he wants to be famous, he wants money. It's just he likes to make people smile, which is a very courageous and really awesome thing. So, like, I legitly applaud him for that. Uh, so, here we go. Me messing around with the hair. Um, I, I I think I started adding a little too much detail. So, uh, you could see me kind of simplifying things a little bit. Um, and then the background, I, I kind of cheated a little bit. I, I duplicated a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of the, the Disney techniques look very, like, brushy, like, airbrushed. So, um, while I particularly am a much bigger fan of harsh lines, um, harsh edges on the brushes, right? Uh, with this one, it's just kind of, um, I'm using soft brushes, you know, uh, to give that soft edge and that, that brush look. And, uh, with the background, there's a lot of really big techniques I used. Uh, for example, um, at one point, I, uh, I tried to give that illusion of the, the, the sun coming through the water, which just has beams of light, and all that is is just a big brush with a soft thing, you know, um, no harsh edges, just kind of going the same direction multiple times with different various sizes, and boom, you got it. Um, so here we go, me painting this part. Uh, most of the colors are sampled from between two different pictures. Um, one of the pictures that I used just just didn't look super good, like it was highly saturated and just kind of looked off, so I kind of uh, dimmed down some of the colors a little bit, and then... Um, sampled from another one but for the most part it's uh it's a combination of two different poster colors backgrounds here um i simplified the thing a little bit i'm using a combination of a regular brush a chunky chalk brush and just something because i i wanted to give it a painted look i wanted it to look a little messier than the main character because i didn't want to focus too much the hard part here and something that i um found myself doing afterwards because like how do you present this because, you know, at the end result, I obviously don't want to paint this huge, huge thing, especially since only a strip of it's going to be shown. Okay, so here's me doing that technique I was talking about with the lights. It's just multiple different one of those. And it works so well. Uh, I wound up adding some uh, bubbles, a little bit more than the actual bubble count in the uh, original picture that I was basing this off of, mostly because it just made it seem a little bit more interesting. So here's me painting the background. Um, so, like, I had a lot of, I mean, you guys know I had a lot of stuff going on this month, and so, like, what I wound up doing is just kind of rushing through these, but it, it looks fine. Like, they're background objects, so it, it doesn't matter as much. I, I spent most of my time on the character, but we did want to make sure that this guy, uh, the, the, the sea looked alive. We didn't want it to be just super bare. And so, uh, what I did was I took a couple examples of some of the similar background seaweed and other elements, and kind of painting up my own version of it, um, you know, made it close enough, which, you know, these things were really, really simple. It's just uh, kind of a messy wave up a little bit, and boom, you got it. And then uh, after uh, painting up some of the background, what you can see me here, trying to mimic uh, some of the more sea urchin-y um, type of, um, what is it called? Coral. Coral. That's it. Coral. Um, and so now I'm going to take some of these pieces and warp them and multiply them. Um, but first, I guess I'm uh, making a little bit of a sea floor. You know, so right now it's just like trying to make a, so I made a little fish and then I'm just kind of duplicating them. So right now it's just kind of adding things so it doesn't look super bare. And uh, overall, it came out pretty well. Um, 
I mean, it's still obvious that I duplicate the the fish a little bit. What I wound up doing is drawing one fish multiple multiple times, making the size change a little bit, and then also changing the how thick the opacity is. So here now I'm blending or not blending, and now I'm just kind of moving some of the object, warping them so it looks like it's kind of floating in the sea, and then lowering the opacity. What I wound up doing right here is adding a white border on the top and bottom with the main character staying on top. That way, it still looked presentable even though you're only going to see a section of it. Well, that's the commentary this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. I'll see you guys next